Hey guys, my name is Ed and welcome to my toy room. Today we're going to have a look at all the things I've acquired since 2008. That's right, I've been collecting that long. Uh, started out doing mainly retro games, trinkled into some TMNT, and then I just started going crazy over toys. So let's have a look. Alright guys, this is basically what I'm working with, a long rectangular room which has a side attached to the roof so I can't really put high shelves up on that side, however the other side goes way up which allows me to still weigh a ton of things. Now how have I kind of like structured the room? Um, I kind of wanted to keep things down over here so I put some lower um, shelving units over here which have already gotten taken over by some play sets and basically every type of wall except for um, where the heating system is has got shelves or glass cases so over here I have mainly my 90s type of toys with some turtles that flows into more turtle stuff but this time boxed then we have some uh, masters of the universe and some Mattel things on top over there in the box and then it starts trickling down into even more toy lines over here you got your dino riders more of the 80s stuff alongside some 90s and down below we have my remaining games collection my retro gaming collection then over here in the glass cases i have some more oddities which we'll take a look at later and down in the lower cases it's pretty much each compartment has its own dedicated toy line sometimes two sometimes two compartments are needed for this and this basically just goes around the entire room like this and then in the end we have another glass case with some more <laughs> boxed toys stowed away on top and now it's time to take a look at each shelf in detail go deeper into whatever is in there I will put timestamps so you can kind of follow oh, I want to see the turtle stuff I want to see the master universe stuff or the GI Joe stuff and in the end I will also mention where I got all the glass cases from which IKEA furniture I'm popping into this room so definitely try using the timestamps if you want to look for something specific And let's start off strong on top over here with all these boxed vehicles and some play sets by Turtles. So what we basically have here is all of my uh, vehicle madness that has been just accumulating. I, I keep buying these things, but I just love them so much. So much that I can't really display all of the cool uh, box art anymore. And it's just like, you used to see them at stores, honestly, like this on the side with the, the blue, uh, that, that colorful blue with the logo, which I totally love. Now I had a ton of these as a kid and there's then again, so many I wanted as a kid, like this turtle uh, tank or the bubble bomber, which is just amazing. And there's definitely some really cool grails in here, like the Channel 6 news fan we got over here, or the Giant Krang, which is amazing. Then we have the uh, second edition of the Blimp hiding away over there. And definitely some classics tucked away over here. On top we got the Turtle Communicator, and obviously the Technodrome over here. Then there's some more ninja action turtles there now these were some shelf toppers i was able to acquire really like it this is the teenage mutant hero turtles i still have a couple more but i really want to keep them mint so i'm not gonna be using those um, these things are actually on top of a teenage mutant ninja turtle store display but i don't have enough room to properly display it so it's just stacking up toys like it used to back in the day Knowing that this side is 
the mainly turtle side. I mean, there's turtles everywhere in this collection. If you checked out, you know, the, the other bits I, I popped in here. What I tried to do with this little nook here is have mainly 90s toys and gross out toys. So there's some 80s thrown in as well. I know, doesn't really make sense, but <laughs> let's have a look. The first couple turtle shelves we have over here. Um, this is my childhood sewer play set. And uh, I'll always know because I popped some Jurassic Park stickers on top of this one, which I, I I guess I tried peeling off at one point, but they're still on there, so that's cool. These are mainly just TMT variations that look very much like the original, like the storage shell turtles or some of the head droppers. In the back, we got some of the cartoonies and just some fun characters that I really liked back in the day, like Wingnut over here. What's actually cool is that over here we have some artwork here that was used by Varner to create the toys with. These are a reprints of some of the sketches. If we go down one shelf, then we're over at the Technodrome filled with foot soldiers. We got all the baddies we want, Rocksteady, Bebop, Shredder, even a Super Shredder, and some baddies just stowed away over here. And one more level down, we actually head into some of the lesser popular, perhaps, turtles. Um, these are definitely some later releases or some of the uh, samurai transforming turtles. Uh, we got the cyber samurais over there. We got some of the minis. And uh, then we head into the next mutation stuff. <laughs> um, I actually had these as a kid and they, they were fun for what they were, but I, I never really got into it and I kind of like left off after the first wave. There's also some more Japanese, some anime turtle inspired ones in here. But um, overall, these are often like not looked after by most collectors. Barnyard Commandos isn't really heavily represented in my collection, but luckily I had these two over here and then we head into some of the more sought-after TMNT action figures We have over here is some of the ones I really like the way the sculpt looks and as you can probably tell some of the more sought-after ones some of them uh, going for quite some money Definitely, but over here some of the noteworthy ones that I got are definitely the uh, Heroes of the Forgotten Sewer and uh, the Robotic Rocksteady, some of the Dinosaur Turtles, and yeah, um, love these horror type ones as well. I just love the sculpt on them. And then something that you don't really too often see is uh, mentioned are the minis over here. Now these go to the play sets that we showed in one of the cases earlier, but I just wanted to have them out like this as well. And then we have some of the amazing sculpts that Anaglyph Studios mostly did. They did a lot of the bad guys and I, I absolutely love the way these look. Uh, over there we got a hot spot and we have the green April that goes with the Channel 5 news fan. Then one more down, we have even more TMNT variations. There's the um, controversial uh, Black Belt Mikey that, uh, well, I mean, we still don't know. I, I think it has to do with like the lead that was probably underneath his feet in there. To make him perform the ninja action necessary, we got some of the small troll turtles in there, but most of this stuff is pretty much just um, you know turtles in different outfits and then we head into some of the movie turtles i really like this line this line is just absolutely amazing and a lot of the tmnt3 uh toy line as well then on the next shelf we have a lot more playmates toy lines that i'm just really into we got some of the primal rage dinosaurs right here alongside the gorillas we have earthworm jim with his companions and then some toxic crusaders this is the technodrome and toys paludo figure made out of resin I, I absolutely love the way this guy looks as well and uh yeah some dick tracy some savage dragon and some playmates star trek because i mean why not? I absolutely love the way the Toxic Crusaders look over here and Skeleton Warriors alongside Monster Force are some of uh, my favorite toy lines I actually played with as a kid. So I even have some of the knockoffs over here which are actually pretty good. Uh, they, they definitely make your Skeleton Warriors collection look a lot bigger because I mean that 
they, they fit in nicely. Then one row down, this is Exo Squad, also made by Playmates. Um, I was actually able to acquire a fairly large collection in one go, which also means I didn't really have enough time to probably research it because you're not piecing it together. You're not searching for like, what is missing over here? I basically just bought a collection and then started displaying it. Uh, so I'm always more of a guy that wants to just get a little piece and then start figuring out, hey, what goes to this? Which ones am I missing? But um, I couldn't say no to the price that was offered to me to get all of these over here because in Europe, they're fairly hard to come by. I don't really like doing that because I like that every single toy has like a story of where I found it and where I got it and who I bought it off of. But yeah, this was just a too good deal to pass on. So. I ended up biting the bullet and now I have a whole shelf of Exo Squad. And then over here we have an exclusive. We have Mighty Matty. This is the prototype. This is Mighty Matty in his Ed's Retro Geek Out colors and a Mighty Matty figure, which I don't know, should I like take it out and pop it into one of these Mighty Max play sets? And over here we have my Mighty Max collection. I have a couple things on card, a couple things in box, but I just really enjoy picking up these and trying to complete them, trying to figure out which little pieces go to which little play set. This Bluebird Toys little Polly Pocket for boys was definitely like a fun thing I had as a kid and uh, I remember getting the Ice Alien over here. That one was really awesome to bring along on car rides and just have fun with. Then we gotta take a look at the Street Sharks and Extreme Dinosaurs collection. Unfortunately, I don't have any muscle nuts because if I would have had some, they would be alongside these other Streetwise IPs. Now, a lot of these I pieced together from just going to flea markets, also popped in some of the Manic Street Sharks and some of the Ocean Warriors, some more knockoffs thrown in to really build up that army. I got some Space Street Sharks. I don't have any of the Night Force or Night Street Sharks. None, none of those, but um, yeah, these are definitely fun. Uh, I definitely enjoy hunting down the accessories that go with them. Love the box they come in. And down here we have some more with some of the vehicles even. Yeah, there's another space one over there. But yeah, this is definitely like a 90s toy line that should not be forgotten and that everybody who's into like anamorphic animals should probably dip their toes into. Then over here we have a nook of some forgotten toys. We got the giant Darkwing Duck. We got one of the Adams Family uh, guys, the Lurch, which I absolutely love. I actually want to get some more of those action figures. Giant Mutations Leo. And there's a sewer police set box tucked away over there. And then we head into some more Toxic Crusaders in box and the new Paludo that was done by Ishmael. So he's somewhere along, he's somewhere else in the collection. We'll get to him later. And the first little compartment has some more 90s anthropomorphic animals. We got Cowboys of Mesa. I'm still looking for a couple. We have one of the giant uh, Primal Range figures here. And in the back, you can also see one of the Star Trek German editions. This is the way some of them actually came out over there. Not on a blister card, but in a little cool package like this. In the back, there's also a Mummy's Life figure on card. Uh, but yeah, I don't really have too much of that line. Would love to get some more, definitely. Another line you can't go without in the 90s was Biker Mice, and I am absolutely in love with um, the figure Moto, so I had to have all of those. Biker Mice from Mars actually also has a lot of bootlegs, as you can see here on the left. And yeah, uh, love the love the choppers, they come on as well. So I'm always looking to add new stuff to this collection. In the back over here, you can actually see Moto's bike. And over here, we have another tasty 90s toy line, Bucky O'Hare. Absolutely love this. And last but not least on this side is where I have some of my TMNT books, uh, the visual history, Rat Plastic, which deals a lot about 
the um, prototypes that they're based off of and some prototypes that didn't make it past the prototype stage. Then there's some SWAT cats over there and the really cool looking figure with the pink and purple details is actually from Zen the Intergalactic Ninja. There's also the sketchbook by Varner which has a ton of sketch artwork for all of the projects they did on the original TMNT line. You just keep seeing new stuff, it's it's never ending. Then over here we have another piece of the puzzle that I didn't know what to do with. I think I'm gonna put like a poster up over here, got my hats on there. Obviously there's some, he there's a heating system there, so I don't want to put anything right in front of it, but plushies? They work out well. So I got my My Monster Pets right here. I got my My Pet Monster, which I love. Gojira figures, some of the Imperial ones. Over here we have a big gym truck because why not? I want to have a big gym truck. Some TMNT um, backpacks with really cool artwork and some of the hats. Uh, I just have laying around. Down below we have a cool turtles, uh, what is it like? Like a little trash can kind of thing. There's a big mad ball over here. Some Zuglies, some Los Tremblors, some My Monster Pets, and even more Los Tremblors over here. And one of the Silver Hawks, Tallyhawk. Next up we have the Mad Ball shelves. Over here we got the head poppers. Unfortunately my skeleton, he popped. It broke over there. So be very careful when you pop all of these on. It's actually safer if you leave them off. Um, then we head into the actual Mad Balls and some knockoffs. There's a ton of knockoffs honestly by them as you can see over here. Some Savage Mondo Blitzers in the back. And over here we have another one of the big Mad Balls, the Super Mad Balls in the packaging, which I absolutely love. Some picture soaps and just some of the uh, actual Mad Balls I was able to pick up. Some of these are actually the foamy type, so like this, and some of the harder type. So if you were to like really want to hit your your brother or, or your friend, uh, those would definitely um, do the trick. Then we got some blur balls tucked away over here and this is a Greek version, a El Greco version of one of the um, Infaceables vehicles alongside the Dino Saucer box for a Master Turtle Customs replica that my buddy Chifaho Creations is actually working on. And over here it's all about the Gremlins or the Mogwai. I mean, I like both of them. Really fun movie, love collecting all these little pieces and bits. So whenever I can get my hands on something Gremlins related, I'll be picking it up. Definitely looking for more of the Elgen stuff like the big Gremlin. I already got the big gizmo in the back over there. And then down here, some more Mattel stuff. We got horror pets alongside some food fighters. Now, these are actually tricky um, toy lines to get or get into. Um, some of these food fighters are going for a lot of money these days. And uh, I'm slowly just building up, finding new ones and trying to add them to the collection. The reason I collect horror pets is just because look at the sculpts on these things. They're freaking amazing. And then one line that couldn't be missing in the 90s alongside all of the other Eco Warrior toy lines is Captain Planet. In the middle, we have Captain Pollution, one of the harder ones to get alongside the European version of Juke Nukem, which has some sort of a light up function as well, kind of like Laser Light Skeletor or He Man. And over here are most of the dudes with the actual rings, so I was very glad being able to add those to the collection. And in the back, you got one of the Geo Cruisers in box. I think I'm still missing a couple figures and some accessories, but this is a fun line to pick up every once in a while when you see a good deal. Then down here, we're continuing with more 90s stuff like James Bond Jr., some Pirates of Dark Water, and Crash Test Dummies. Yes! Now one of the lines I got really heavily into the past two years is actually Dungeons and Dragons and I love adding new figures to this collection. Uh, as well as the, the PVC type of toys, you can see over here the little TSR ones or the LGN ones with a lot of detail, a lot of articulation, and just some amazing sculpts. 
Uh, I love the monsters like the hook monster over here and hopefully I'll be adding more to this collection this year. Another type of toy that was all the rage during the 90s was trolls. They had a new craze and this time around the boys toy market was also thrown in there. You got stone protectors, you got some of these knockoffs, but also battle trolls and troll warriors were all the rage during the 90s. And then over here we got some body wars which it's kind of like Mighty Max, but they have bigger figures in there with a projectile usually. And then there's obviously some 70s toys that made it into my collection or some reissues that I have. So over here, I got some Stretch Armstrong reissues from not too long ago. I actually know about Stretch Armstrong from seeing his revival during the 90s. And uh, over here, I got some big gym stuff like the big gym tiger that some of the toys from Master of the Universe were based on later. I got a Lone Ranger, I got some Migos, I got the Sucker Man in the back, and a Micronauts Force Commander. Awesome. And then most of the stuff in this last compartment on this side is actually by the Conan line from Hasbro. Now these relied heavily on one gimmick where you actually have a pull string action on the back and then they would do some weird actions. But uh, these were like pretty bulky toys. I was able to get like a ton of them in one go, so I decided to go for it. And uh, this thing also belongs to Dungeons and Dragons. And then over here, we got some Men in Black action. So you can see over here, I got a A-Team van tucked away, which is still in the box, which I really like. Uh, I was very glad getting to own that one. And then on top, on these shelves, I actually have a lot of Mattel stuff tucked away. As you can see, I have a lot of the castles by Master of the Universe in box, some battle bones on top, some boxed other Master of the Universe things like Stridor or Night Stalker. And uh, over here, we got some Secret Wars by Mattel and Boglins. Definitely love Boglins a lot. This one is a Super 7 Possessed Skeletor, which I definitely needed to have. And here we have a Baby Boglin on card and some Soggy Boglins still in the box. This thing is actually original artwork for a VHS tape uh, that was meant for Italy distribution. So somewhere in Italy, there should be a VHS tape with this artwork on top of it. And yeah, then we have my Giants collection on these uh, smaller and uh, not so wide shelves. Over here we have the Star Toys Hacksaw, then we have a bootleg, then we got some of the Giants like the Mutation or the Movie 3 Turtle over here. We got the Giant Bootleg Toxie just chilling and some more Giant Turtles. Over here, we have um, Ken Scott, which we actually met over at Comic-Con Brussels. Super nice guy, and uh, yeah, had to get an autograph. Then over here, we have some more Giants, some of the baddies, and another piece of art by the Anomaly. Then we're going further in some of the Giants, or just some big toys like we got the Terminator here, Batman, Kenner figure, some small soldiers, which aren't that small, this giant one, and the Sentinel from the Toy Biz X-Men line. Then on top over here is my Dino Riders collection, which hasn't grown too much apart from more mutants that I popped on the shelf. So I'm definitely army building all the weird looking mutants over here. I would love to get the T-Rex and the Brachiosaurus because they just look freaking amazing, but haven't had the chance to really bump into them, unfortunately. However, the mutant army is still growing. Then over here we start getting into more Boglins territory. We got some of the hairy Boglins, some of the baby Boglins, some of the smaller ones with the box. This is a Goosebumps type of toy that came out in the 90s, but was definitely based on the original sculpt by Mattel that made the Boglins. Some of the arms are just spot on. Then over here we got some more Boglins, some of the GT ones that came to Europe later on some soggy boglins, baby boglins, and the three where it all started with in box. So definitely loved having these and finding them over the years. This next shelf actually has all my Secret Wars and my Superpowers toys in here. I'm still missing a couple pieces here, but I do have the three European exclusives. Superpowers wise, I'm always looking to find more and I'm actually trying to find a lot more of the Secret Wars on card. Then over here, there's some more newer toys I actually picked up, like 
these Cosmic Cowboys and some Sheriff Solar. Then over here we got some Voltron and some Crystar. Then I have a shelf dedicated to Power Rangers. I was definitely a fan when it first came out. The Dragon's Zord was all I cared about that year. That thing was so cool. I was able to get it as a kid. And then obviously as an adult, I needed to get one back in the box with the Green Ranger from basically like the movie where the Ninja Zord came out. I, I kind of left off. So my collection is pretty much almost like complete with what I am nostalgic for for this line. But uh, it's, it's, it's growing on me again. I, I, I don't know why, but I feel like maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get more into Power Rangers again. All right, then we're over at the two big Detolves. These mainly have like just random stuff in them, or at least they look like that. There's actually a meta to the madness. Let's go Detol deep. <laughs> <laughs> Digging in Detol. This is pretty much like really random stuff, honestly, but some of the most amazing stuff. Um, this thing is like a lot of rare pieces I wanted to own, um, like this Mattel bat, uh, Gregory bat or Grigori Bat is one of the things that was on my want list for the longest time. So I had to pick him up. Then we have this somewhat um, controversial E.T. finger light. Why? Why is it controversial? <laughs> Why do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Explain. <laughs> Your video. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think there's anything wrong with this? <laughs> I don't see any problem. You don't it. see any problem. Okay. Parent groups thought it was, th thought it looked like something else. I also have some Pokemon cards, because I grew up when like the original stuff came out. Um, so yeah, probably nothing worthwhile. But this is just like one of those things I definitely wanted to own because it, it was a part of growing up and like getting into collecting because you really had to collect them all and everything. So maybe. Maybe some of that stuck, and that's why I kept <laughs> buying everything. Mm -hmm. um, what else is in here? We got the controversial Punisher because he he basically has an ET finger light coming out when you transform him. <laughs> and then like the only prototype thing I own, uh, thanks to Matt, is this prototype um, Toxic Crusader Toxie. Um, I had my buddy from Javaho Creations create a translucent body in order to fill in the gaps of like, I only had parts of a unproduced toy or I only had parts of the prototype toy, but very cool in here is actually the unproduced head sculpt that also came with it uh, before he didn't actually come with a bandana. And uh, being a really big Toxic Crusader fan, having had this toy as a kid, I was like, oh, this is super awesome. Then we have a pizza face here because I wanna get the David Asharsky um, head sculpt with the uh, little head tucked away underneath the hat uh, in there and these things are, are something that are like some somewhat more tricky to get uh, team and T wise over here we have the um, dark horse miniatures for the connoisseur uh, team and T toys what connoisseur, what connoisseur? <laughs> the the miniature connoisseur and you this was like a, a connoisseur to own them <laughs> <laughs> So this, this is kind of like a D&D type of game. So we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and our Strangeness, which is kind of like this role, this RPG book. Um, so that actually predates everything that's done by Playmates. And then once they started running with um, Turtles uh, on the cartoon and everything, those kids that were playing with this thought like, oh, this is like silly because it's for little kids now. So that kind of wore off. Mm -hmm. This is something I found as a kid over at a flea market in France. And um, this was basically like um, something that you could win in a Three Kings cake. So they would have like Three a, Kings cake. A, a celebration around Christmas time um, where they would put little hard dots inside of your <laughs> cake. And if you bid on one of them, you could win one of these things. You make it seem awful. I know, it, it is. It's, it's, it's European. Actually, it's actually awful. It's a European <laughs> tradition. <laughs> and then so many, so they're rare because so many kids choked on them and not. Uh, well, you didn't put that in. You put like a little, you would put like an uncooked bean or something in there. And uh, if you got that or 
like, yeah, you can win at one of those. Everybody's learning so much today. <laughs> Next up, we just have turtle randomness. Um, I have tubs and tubs of this stuff, and this is just some of the things that looked really um, inspiring to me. So I, I placed them in here. Uh, there's also a, uh, I, I think this is like the, the first edition of the Mauser Turtle by Ahima Adventures. He was kind enough to send me one of those because I'm actually really into uh, what all of the customizers are doing. They're creating these insane toys right here. I hardly buy new toys, but I do have a couple, so I, I really like what uh, Super 7 was doing with the um, Ultimates TMNT toys. Uh, I really love the attention to the original and the attention to detail, all of the ways they can add in new points of articulation. There's also some of the Mattel Street Sharks that came out a couple years ago, trying to revamp the brand somewhat, but um, yeah, apart from Cl Clambo, Clamando, apart from Clamando, um, there wasn't really, <laughs> apart from Clamando, there wasn't like really anything in there uh, scratching my itch, so that's what I got. Okay. Then over here, what I really wanted to do was create a, a safe environment for all of my bootleg turtles, because I have so many. I don't know why, but I just love the way these things look and love how many of it is out there. Uh, same thing goes for Master of the Universe, but over here I got all the things that I've assembled over the years. Down here is one of my latest purchases, which had to you know, clear away some of my Nintendo games as well. Um, what I actually started collecting by back in 2008 was finding a Turtles game for the NES. I found it for five bucks over at a convention, which my buddy took me to, and it just sparked this memory. It, it was the first time that I started actively buying things from the past in order to relive like some good memories which is basically what i think most people um do when they get into this and um that's how my my journey started i started buying a lot more um retro games games i had back in the day games i didn't have back in the day because i started learning about them started researching them and started figuring out which things do i really like um, and from that point on, uh, I started going to flea markets and everything and ended up picking up turtle toys and then it just spiraled out of control, honestly. Um, so over here, we got almost all of the TMNT video games. Down here, um, I was a Nintendo gift growing up. I did play some Sega, but Nintendo was something that was always around. Like even later on, I would still bring my Game Boy on like road trips and stuff. Um, and over here is like all of the you know, cool merchandising that I could get my hands on from Mario or from Donkey Kong. Uh, there's some fun stuff in there as well, like some Virtual Boy games. And uh, down here is like parts of what it was for me to be more of a like a retro game collector. There's there's obviously some things stowed away in there that have to do with my channel as well, um, becoming like YouTuber of the month back in the day and um, just like some of like the, the harder to find um, Game Boy games are in here, but there's also references to some of the YouTube channels I really enjoy, like you got Game Dave here, you got the Game Chasers DVD, there's also a Gaming Historian book in there. Then over here we have my Switch collection, some Game Boy stuff. I do actually own a lot of Game Boy. I'm still going for a full set and I need about eight more of those games to complete it. Now we head into some of my Super Nintendo stuff, some N64 games, Half Loose, some boxed SNES and some NES games. Love these awesome Game Boy holders you had back in the day as well. And over here we head into some more SNES, N64, Lynx, whatever, honestly. Oh, a Master System um, add-on onto a Game Gear. I, I love it. I love That's awesome. That's actually how 
I played this stuff. Love that game as well. Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap. And we're not done with games over here. Are some Super Boys, some more games tucked away in there. Kirby's Dreamland, one of my favorites as a kid. For you, we got John Mack and the Retro Duo. Some Tetris, always good for an afternoon. And some more handheld stuff like Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket. And this is actually a Game Boy Light that came out in uh, Japan only. So this is kind of like your Game Boy Pocket, but it had a light up function so you could play at night as well. Then we got some Tiger handhelds by some fun popular lines like Gargoyles or Chippendale. The Euro Turtles edition of the NES with that awesome sleeve with the TMNT box art on it. Uh, right next to a Crash Dummy and some more games in these carrying cases alongside a Super Mario Kart RC thing. Then there's some more NES games. Uh, definitely love that system. It's one I grew up with. It's one I played a ton as a kid. And I do have some of the more heavy hitters like Lil Samson or Power Blade 2, some Gargoyles Quest, Toxic Crusaders, because I needed to have it. Over here we got some of my Master System and Genesis stuff. A Nomad because you always want to play Genesis on the go, obviously. And over here in PAL Country, we obviously have a ton of really cool exclusive titles for the Sega Master System as well. Then the last shelf dedicated to retro video games is this one with the virtual boys some game and watch games over here definitely loved fire back in the day as a kid got some japanese nes games or some famicom games that i really liked battle toes double dragon in box snow brothers and a chippendale 2 which is one i played a ton as a kid so that's why i have it kind of minty uh there's some more boxed nes games over here as well then over here we just have a random shelf with some awesome snailians tucked in and some monsters in my pocket, some minis. I love this thing. This is the mad scientist uh, dissecting aliens so you could actually dissect this. It had slime in it. And over here we got Nightman on card because everybody needs a Nightman. One row on top, we have a lot of the minis, like these little ninjas, which I loved. Some more monsters in my pocket, some army ants or termitors. If you were to go to the more south side of Europe, that's where they got that name from. And some Z-Bots, some uh, termitors over there. You can see it in the little packaging right there. Monsters in my pockets from Greece, some Boglins, mini Boglins. Then we start getting in some more bootleg type of stuff like these Defenders of the Planets, which are quality wise actually right up there next to Motu. I mean, they're amazing sculpts and they look great. Some more trolls, some dinosaur knockoff action, and obviously more TMNT stuff. This is my Turley Gang army. Um, I see a lot of Turley Gang, so whenever I see one that's affordable, I just pick them up and I add them to this shelf because I love the way these look. They're, you know, they're, they're a mixture of TMNT and Motu, and nothing is better than that. Now, we don't really head into more um, knockoff stuff over here because we got Sectars, two of them on their awesome um, bugs that you actually put your hand into and it functions as a glove and then you can make it really come alive. This is Gorgon from the Super Joe team, I believe. Um, and then we got some more Boglins, but these are the new, uh, the newly released ones because I'm still looking for the original Halloween ones like Bogabones would we'll love to have that one or Blobkin. We got some more knockoffs and some Transformer stuff over here. Actually, this is um, Galaxy Fighters End of Time. These are very colorful as you can see and some dragons, sometimes Imperial, sometimes something different, but all of these worked great with your 5.5 knockoffs and toys because over here we head into more of them. Uh, we got some of the combos. We got some Galaxy Fighters, some Galaxy Warriors, some Rambo action, some Baltard, some Nightmare Warriors, or whatever these things are. I forgot after a while. Uh, this thing I definitely love. This is Dragons, Knights, Daggers, Warrior, warrior weapons on the blister still. Some of it has shifted around inside the blister, but 
I had to pick that thing up. That was just too cool. Then what's better than getting, you know, a 5.5 knockoff? Getting a 5.5 knockoff with a skeleton on it. Over here, we have Skull Force. We got Skull Man from the Remco toy line. And this is a custom Det Lore replica made by my buddy from Jafaho Creations. Then we have some actual Galaxy Warriors, not the fighters. Uh, in pretty good condition. Um, I'm definitely uncertain on if these were the weapons they came with, but they look so much more better when you add the weapons to the toys. Then we got some of the Remco Savage Beasts and uh, Conan and, and all that, that good jazz, honestly. A Sunman replica as well. This is not a real one, unfortunately. And in the back, an awesome book made by uh, Platt Stallions, my buddy Brian. He also did this Rack Toys book, which is amazing as well. And that's pretty much it for this corner right here. Now, one of the biggest purchases I did a couple of years ago now, which pretty much dictated me into changing up my whole room was buying an Eternia. Uh, it is definitely considered a toy grail amongst Motu collectors uh, because it came out very late in the line when maybe all of the interest was already gone. But this was like just the craziest thing they popped together. Like the tooling must have cost a fortune to put this thing out. And uh, I was able to get one with the box from one of the collectors that I basically um, created my type of collecting around. The way I use glass cases, the way I love setting up everything mixed in is something I saw over in his collection uh, when I started going over to his to buy some stuff and I saw his collection and that became a blueprint for me to just go out and pick up stuff that looked interesting, figure out more about it, learn more about it, and go from there. Um, I remember one of the first times I went over to his place, I asked about Eternia. I had heard about it, I knew it was wanted, and he quoted me a price which I couldn't afford back then. Then years later, I helped him out with some things, getting some stuff sold, and he was like, if you want the Eternia, I'll give it to you for the same price I quoted you like eight years ago. So that was like, very, uh, a very endearing moment. So I think right now we're actually gonna take a look at what's on top of this uh, Calyx shelving unit. I actually popped two of these together to be able to house the Eternia playset on here and add some more playsets on top as well. Um, let's start over here in the corner. So over here, we actually have some overflow that's heading into this window. We got some of the swords, some uh, Thundercats, uh, the Eye of Thanthera, and uh, the, the Power Sword. And then we have this awesome display uh, to pop some Master of the Universe figures on. I would probably need like four or five more to have all of them on there. I got my Horde Trooper army next to my Eternia. I actually just put the towers up. I, I haven't put the monorail in or anything, but uh, it's something I'm planning to do. Um, then we have the Horde Trooper army over here. Some more Turley gangs. They're, they're everywhere. We got the Nordor. We got the Starship Eternia over here. And on top we have some more excellent figures some shira stuff thrown in as well we got the slime pit uh i mean there's turly gangs everywhere over here it's I, I don't i don't think it's safe anymore uh and then over here we got the fortress of thangs which is amazing and you can't see it because there's too much toys in front of it unfortunately here's some more sun gold madness like this mammoth and uh yeah this one is also Remco Savage Beasts. Warrior Beasts, sorry, Warrior Beasts. Then I do have this little display set up right here on top. I, I just pop up some random stuff to put some color into the background of my videos. I got some Transformers, got this awesome Sharp Hand Joe. There's some Rock Lords, Dinosaurs here. There's some Manix type of Planet of the Apes knockoffs. Uh, we got Motu Slime. There's a knockoff Alien, some Skeleton Fighters, more uh, awesome Silver Hawks, some Bionic 6. Then we have a Remco Frankenstein figure, which I'm gonna be looking for more of these actually. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I'll leave on like some of the tags when I buy them over at shows. Like this guy from Retro Room, I always bump into him over at the Chicago Toy Show, I always buy something off of him. And it just reminds me of when I bought some things. This was actually also done by Jafaho Creations. This is a 
as Retro Geek Out Skeletor, like in, in the colors of my channel. So thank you so much for creating that. And then we have some more Warrior Beasts by Remco. Then we got the Skeletor, and on the other side, you got the He Man type of uh, alarm clock thing. And over here, we got the vinyl version of Pluto made by Ishmael next to some of the more fun uh, toys I got over here. I got um, this awesome Extreme Dinosaur, the Metaluna Raph, Universal Monster, and Tendril from the Inhumanoids. We got some more Mad Balls and Mad Balls knockoffs like this Rude Ralph over here. Then we have a new edition of the Storage Shell Turtles, but I just love this figure so much, so I needed to have him again. We got the Wrestlers from Soma, I believe. This is just so much fun, like little figures you can't really do too much with, but seeing it on the blister, I knew I had to have it. We got a Team and T Movie 3 Donnie, which I had as a kid, and some more Mad Balls knockoffs. This is the other side of that alarm clock and radio, and there's a lot more little hidden secrets over here on this side. Box Thundercats action. This is the minis belt, the Lino belt, where you can pop all of your minis on. I do have the Fist Pounder in box, the Mutant Fist Pounder, and the Thunder Tank, which I really like. And then down below, we started heading into my Thundercats collection, which I have been trying to piece together by just going to flea markets and then finding most of the accessories over at toy shows or trying to buy them complete at toy shows to just scratch them off the list and have them complete. Definitely love the Thunder Tank. That thing is amazing. And in the back, you will see a couple of knockoffs as well. Going one road down, we head into even more 80s toy lines. We got some over the top Sylvester Stallone, some A-Team stuff. There's a new Moto Origins in there I see right now, but uh, yeah. Just forget about it, you know? Uh, we got some Centurions, we got some Humanoids. This Centurion is actually just like a flashlight. It's not the actual toy, and uh, love the A-Team, so I had to have a ton of that over here. In the back, you will see some collector's books, like the Mark Bellamo books for Star Wars Transformers, um, and some of the Toy Fair catalogs for Mattel. Over here, we have some of the um, books about the toy industry and all of the Masters of the Universe books that came out. Also, the Pixel Dan book is in there. And this is Power Lords with some knockoff He-Man type of stuff. And there was one more shelf with some He-Man characters in it. Uh, nothing too crazy in here, but it's always good to see He-Man on his trusty Battle Cat. More 80s toys with these Infaceables and Supernaturals. The Supernatural Ghosts are something I'm definitely after, and I'm pretty close to completing all of these Infaceables uh, to get the complete run. Then a 90s line that snuck in here is Small Soldiers. Um, yeah, still looking for one of the big toys in there, but if I do, like, I'm gonna need more space, so. Hopefully I won't run into it because I know I won't be able to keep myself from buying it. Another epic toy line from the 80s was Black Star. I definitely love the Warlock in the back. You can see over here. Then we got Lava Lock. We got a ton of really cool action figures in here, actually. We got the blonde haired version of John Black Star, which is the one that came out in Greece, just like the Strobits in the singular color. And there's actually like a crazy story behind it, but I'll save that for a toy history. From the 80s back to the 90s, well, the early 90s, when Tailspin and Darkwing Duck came out in Disney afternoon, and Playmates actually decided to go for those licenses. So we got Darkwing Duck figures, and we got these awesome Tailspin um, action figures as well. Then over here, I got some of my She-Ra collection. Whenever you start looking around for a lot of Motu stuff, you'll eventually bump into some She-Ra and some Golden Girls, and some, some knockoffs even. Then over here, we got the new adventure of He-Man, a toy line I actually really like. Um, I, I definitely think there was a lot of potential for this toy line, but unfortunately not a lot of kids were into it. Now Mattel already had some new plans. They were gonna put out Brave Star. Okay, let's do one more knockoff shelf. Over here we have some of the, I think Spain created um, 
knockoffs for dinosaurs then we have these cool wrestler looking figures with these funky colors and these actually have two heads so you can spin these around give them cool heads and uh some more knockoffs there's an imperial um, dragon in the back over there some type of a knockoff and yeah some a, a pegasaurus missing his wings but uh, i was just really glad being able to find that one And then over here, we needed something to really fill up this little gap over here, so I popped my Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy in here. Awesome looking pull string toy, an Inhumanoids character, Granon or Granok, and some Rambo stuff, and Zoids! Yay! Then we head into some Toy Biz stuff. Uh, I, I've been mainly just. Whenever I find them, I, 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 I add them to the collection. Whenever I don't have them yet, um, I definitely grew up with these Spider-Man toys, but I never really had too many of the X-Men or the Fantastic Four figures. But yeah, this line was definitely extensive to say the least, and I had to add in a couple of Marvel comics in the back. When we're talking about comics, we also have to talk about DC. So the animated series from Batman is definitely something I was into as a kid as well. And uh, just love adding new characters to it. Then if we're starting out with Kenner stuff, we obviously have to talk about Jurassic Park. Which is another one of those lines that I really enjoyed as a kid. I actually had this car back in the day so still trying to find that one in box to relive that memory basically sourced most of these dinosaurs and i'm army building the little velociraptors um basically sourced them all from just flea markets these were all like one dollar buys honestly here there's some more dinosaurs yeah don't really have too much to say about these some type of store display thing uh why not so yeah then Behind all this stuff, I have some comic books or some movie books, uh, just stuff that's interesting to me. Black Flag books and other American hardcore uh, books like that. Over here, there's some more gross out toys, and uh, including some of the Mad Nutties by Marx or Tales from the Crypt toys. I really like those. One of the best things I picked up over in Mexico when I was toy hunting over there was this critter replica which i think is just freaking amazing then over here we have some more kenner stuff from aliens to gargoyles and it just keeps out oh, yeah these tripped over <laughs> we we got karate commandos in here we got some Mattel stuff in here as well and some goosebumps but yeah this is basically just a random shelf with some random toys tucked away in there this shelf i didn't even get around to like properly displaying but if I would have waited for that, this video would have taken even longer than it already has to be made. Ain't that right, Clayface? Then another couple fun lines are these rock lords over here together with the gnarlies. These are amazing to find over at flea markets. Then we have some battle beasts tucked away over here. Yeah, they, they were underneath there. Uh, yeah, had to throw in some of these rock lords. Definitely love all of the stuff uh by battle beasts this was part of transformers in japan um or loosely part of it um, but there's definitely a connection between the two toy lines and uh if we're talking about transformers we might as well go into what the 90s had in store for transformers and that was these beast wars this is something that i definitely grew up with these are a lot of the trans metal versions of them but yeah, I also have some of the first ones that got released like the Rhinox or the Dinobot. Dinobot was one of my childhood favorites. And in the back, I obviously had to have uh, the big Optimus Prime Gorilla and the T-Rex Megatron in box right there. Another gorgeous playset from the 80s is the Ghostbusters Firehouse. Uh, so I, it seemed proper to just display all the figures around it. I definitely love all of these big monsters that came with it. Uh, the big ghosts are definitely like 
the the stars in this toy line for me but I do have a lot of the Ghostbusters themselves because they come with these little accompanying ghosts so definitely had to splurge on whenever I see them to army build them I definitely had to have the Ecto-1 in there as well but I wish I had a little bit more space to display it properly then over here I do have a little bit of Hasbro um, Hasbro's yeah wrestlers so yeah there's some knockoffs thrown in there as well like this awesome dude uh, and yeah a knockoff ring love this thing as well I actually think this playset is one of the best playsets ever because it's just I mean it's where everything around this IP took place like it took place in the ring or right outside the ring so you couldn't have like a better playset when playing with these toys then we got another wrestler knockoff on card over here and then there's some Star Wars stuff but first let's take a look over at the random shelf right here we got some Rainbow Bright we got some Sailor Moon we got some Super Cyber Samurai Squad monsters we got some of the other Bandai things like the Beetleborgs or the Masked Rider the Kamen Rider and Dragonflies yeah they're dangerous but um I mean I, I won't play it with him it's fine we got some Rambo stuff we got the little dragon that came with my little pony <laughs> because why not and uh for here we got the genie we got some more fun things tucked away over here obviously you needed to have a little bit of lego in the collection i definitely loved pirates and the castles but this pirate ship is one i still had from when i was a kid so decided to pop him up over here some karate kids more rambo stuff and just some some random bits like like the starcom thing over here then on top over here we have some of my Ghostbusters toys in the box, uh, which you can't really see because we've got the Tomahawk over here and some of my favorite characters from the G.I. Joe toy line. Definitely love this Snake Eyes version. He was one of the ones I grew up with and uh, just having the European edition with the extra launcher and everything made it super awesome. Uh, I mainly like Cobra stuff though. And then we head into my G.I. Joe collection. I Definitely wanted to army build these as a kid as well, but never got them. Over here in this nook, I actually have a little bit of Action Force, which is what became to uh, Pallet Toys Action Man in the UK um, after, you know, Star Wars hit big and everything had to just become smaller, honestly. Then over here, we have all the G.I. Joes that I, I pretty much just ran into whilst hunting around at flea markets whenever i would find like a big lot of them i would just pick them up and you know add them to the collection and then years later uh i started just looking through like what do i actually have here um it seems to be pretty easy in belgium to run across them for some reason um but yeah um it's something I wanted as a kid, but never really had too many. I, I mainly had Lanterns toys, so I had the core, but I didn't really have the actual G.I. Joes. Um, so one shelf down, there's even more of them and some of the exclusives. And uh, yeah, one of the cool vehicles, or at least the vehicle I thought was cool, uh, the big bug or the Nauticalus. And uh, in the back, we have one of the ones I had as a kid, uh, Ninja Force Dojo, Ninja Force Dojo. So I had to pick him up on card. There's some of the Street Fighter stuff in there as well. They turned those guys into Joes as well. And over here, probably the messiest part of the collection because I basically just ran out of space. This is the, the mask collection. Uh, so I, 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 I kind of stumbled upon two big lots of this stuff and I'm still trying to piece it together. Um, and that just basically flows over into my Star Wars collection, which I started around three years ago. I started collecting these. I definitely love uh, collecting a toy line that had such a big impact on the toy industry. And I do have a couple of really sought after pieces like the Yak Face, um, but overall, I'm just looking to really um, find cool stuff. There's also this awesome um, newly created uh, next 17 figure Efont man by the next 17 uh, He does a couple things and over here in my Ewok village. He actually has the baby Wampa that he also created <music> 
Talking about the Ewok Village, I definitely love this place set. Had to just inhabit it with all sorts of Ewoks and add in a few funny bits. So over here we have the baby Wampa that's tucked away over here. He actually glows in the dark. And down below there's some more stormtroopers and a knockoff transformer because why not? I'm definitely not proud of the way this is displayed but I kind of ran out of room and ran out of ideas. So this is my transformers collection and I kind of figured out that I really have to put them in robot mode to like pop them uh, behind each other and be able to display more. I thought like you know you can just pop him in like dinosaur mode or in car mode and it'll work out but it just takes up so much space so i'm gonna have to learn how to transform all of these and pop them in there there's some more mask stuff thrown up in here as well but this is just a mess and i do really want to apologize for it so here are all the things that i popped in here shelf wise these are billy cases that i got from ikea and um this is pretty much the oldest furniture I have in here and I kind of regret not going for the white versions of these because it really makes the colors pop out a lot more. You can still get these billy cases. Right next to it we have two Detolf glass cases. Now the problem with these is that they're not really wide so you can't really fit too much stuff in there and that's why I went over to these bigger glass cases. Now it doesn't really end with Ikea stuff. Over here we got the floating shelves which really worked out well over here on top of the door and over here we have the Calyx which you can get in different sizes different um, multitudes of compartments over here there's like just a, a, a two by one and this allowed me to really have a clean and a continuation of the layout as we go around the room over here now let's talk about these glass cases a little these were actually acquired by a company over over here in Belgium called Retif or something like that and uh, price quality wise I, I, I'm really um, I'm really glad I went with these because they didn't take up too much space but they allow me to really stow away a ton of toys in here um, these things are pricey so definitely go out and look for these secondhand but you're gonna be paying almost as much or, or probably more. Um, these were really fairly priced and uh, I, I really like that I went with this because I can actually pop some play sets in here and uh, really tuck away all of those toys. And then the thing you see over here basically just came from like an interior shop. Like <laughs> nothing too expensive, um, but I just needed something to, to have little shelves so I can kind of make uh, these weird little um, random shelves. I think these things came from the same company and this was just perfect because it doesn't really take up like a whole shelf or anything but I can at least pop my giants in these for now so I'm pretty glad just adding these to the wall and the shelving unit over here also came from one of those type of shops I'm, I'm not really sure what they're called but you can find them anywhere in these interior shops and then the action figure display stands these are actually translucent as you can see over here and I basically got these from Amazon so just type in like nail polish or action figure display stand and go for the acrylic versions there's a multitude of options there but I I just went with these because because it really fits that 5.5 um, type of toy that I usually go after. So yeah guys, that was my toy room tour. Please leave down in the comments below if you saw anything that you really liked. If you have some questions for me, leave them down in the comments below. Definitely let me know if you have some tips for me on how to display stuff more properly. And yeah, um, please subscribe for more 80s and 90s toy videos. I go out hunting with my buddies. Often I do some toy history videos as well. So there's plenty of content for you to subscribe for. I also have a Patreon if you want to support the channel even more but if you leave a like that's fine as well thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next video uh, i've been here uh, over the years and and i've seen the collection grow and grow and uh change and evolve so yeah it's it's fun to make and and see the collection uh, looking as, as as pristine as it does right now yeah it's the the, the nicest and and tidiest looking i've seen it so far um, there's so much stuff in here, you, you have to really walk around to get a feeling of everything that's in here. Yeah, the, the, the see-through uh, Amazon uh, excellent buy value um, stuff. 
um, because yeah, you you have so much more space, and you should change them out with white ones. Yeah.